There are three types of muscle tissue. You'll see here are skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. We're going to go over each one of them and draw them and just put some details with each of these <coughs> with each of these muscles, muscle types. So let's do the first one. This is skeletal. It must have something to do with the skeleton and so yep, these are the voluntary muscles, meaning you have control over them. So the voluntary muscles attached to the skeleton for movement, for heat, they have many nuclei, so they are multi-nucleated. And they also have something called stripes. We're going to use a different word called striations. Now, striations are the result of what's called a sarcomere. And a sarcomere, just as an aside here, a sarcomere is the functional unit of a muscle. You'll learn about sarcomeres during the muscle physiology chapter. Well, anyway, you'll learn how they function. But in, a, in essence, it's really a set of proteins between two things called a Z-line. Here's a Z-line. Doesn't it look like the letter Z? Sort of. <laughs> there's a Z-line, and there's a middle line. Then there's some proteins sticking off of this middle line. And then there are some opposite proteins sticking off of the Z-line. And when these proteins from either direction form an attachment, and I'm not drawing all the attachments for clarity, they're on both sides, but when they form an attachment, they sort of ratchet in towards the center, and that brings the two Z-lines closer together. Proteins are overlapping, and that way it just shortens the distance between the Z-lines. And those red things slide over the black ones in the middle. That's called the sliding filament theory. You'll see that as you move through your studies. So this is a sarcomere, and this is a contracted sarcomere. Really, that's what muscles do. They contract. When they contract, they move the body, they move uh, the organs, whatever they're doing, uh, and they also generate heat. They, have, they store oxygen, they have a the red because they have myoglobin in them. You'll see all kinds of neat things with muscles. Let's look at the way skeletal muscles appear if you were to need to see one under the microscope. Now with that, with this sarcomere in mind, the idea of that sarcomere, that muscle, muscles and skeletons are arranged in these long cells, not like the usual cell, we see, you know, when you think about a cell, often you think about it as a little round cell like this. That's not the case here. This cell in a muscle is called a muscle fiber because it's long, like a fiber. So I'm just drawing an example. Maybe two muscle fibers here. I'm going to add some nuclei. Remember, they're multinucleated. Skeletal muscle has lots of mitochondria, too. <coughs> mitochondria are generating ATP. Now I'm going to add the stripes. And of course, this is all sort of a rudimentary drawing but just to give you the overview so that you can identify a muscle, a skeletal muscle tissue sample based on a couple of things. One of them being those many nuclei that are present. 
Another one being this long shape of the muscle cell, which again is called a muscle fiber. And then the last thing being these stripes or striations. Now let's label those things. We'll make our nuclei blue just so we can set them apart a little bit from the other structures. And then let's call these stripes striations. And really, if you'll notice, they're bands. And the bands are, again, based on this idea of the sarcomere. And circumers line up, so it'll be a bunch of Z in a row like this, and then the sarcomere will be in the middle between the Z lines. And so you have this line here and these stripes you'll start to see are the stripes made by these lines. And so you start to get this striated appearance. The other thing I can see are these many nuclei. So here's a nucleus. And here's another one. So we've got multi nucleated. That's the situation. And then the, the length of this thing, the sheer length of this is so very different from other cells that we want to make a big deal about that too. I wish I could figure out what color I want to use. All right, so the length. This is a muscle fiber, which is also another way to say muscle cell. So the way I could look at it would be the muscle fiber that way, or I could say it was one of these, right? So here's one, here's two muscle fibers. Good enough for skeletal. Our second type of muscle tissue we're going to talk about is cardiac muscle, uh, which is heart muscle. It's the only place it's found <clears throat> in the body, excuse me. And we've said already a couple of the features of it. It is involuntary. You have uh, nervous system components that affect the heart and how fast or slow it beats. And then there's all kinds of um, pressure receptors and all, all things you'll learn about these baroreceptors and carotid, all kinds of things. The heart even puts out hormones to help regulate uh, feedback to itself. But overall, the muscle itself is involuntary. You can't control it. You can only influence it. So involuntary, meaning right now, if I told you to stop your heart and start it again, you would not be able to do that luckily. So involuntary, heart only. Cardiac is obviously found only in the heart, but I'm going to write it anyway. It does have striations. Just like that skeletal muscle. The cells are arranged slightly differently, but it does have striations. And then it has one thing that sets it apart, other than being the heart muscle, but one thing that sets it apart is it has intercalated discs. You can say intercalated, but intercalated has that little CA right there in the middle of it. And that's going to be a way to remember what, that's, what that intercalated disc is for. So one thing that sets cardiac tissue apart is that it has these intercalated discs. Let's look at the way it's shaped. Now I think it looks like bamboo. And we'll see what I mean in just a minute. I'm going to draw a big 
structure that looks kind of like this. Okay. Keeping with the, the Z theme here. And then I'm going to add some barriers between these little cells. And I realize the barriers are kind of like the letter Z, but they're not quite the same as those Z bands that we talked about in skeletal muscle. What I've done is separated these into individual cardiac myocytes. So here's one cardiac myocyte. These are the cells that do the work. We're not talking about the cells, uh, the pacemaker cell or any of the electrical conduction system of the heart. These are just the cells that do the contracting. That's all we're interested in for the moment. I'm going to add some nuclei here. And then what was that last piece? We remember that these cells also have stripes. They are striated. So that means that they must have sarcomeres, or at least are arranged in that fashion between the Z-bands where you see the stripe patterns stand out because of the presence of sarcomeres. Okay, so I'll go through and add all the features I need to identify, but also notice the shape is different. It's not long like that muscle fiber. And I could add another couple of cells going in different directions. Just to let you see that it's not all this one shape. Okay, so here I've got, I guess uh, if I just put a bunch of them together, they start to look like little Y shapes. And if you put a bunch of Y shapes together, I think it begins to look a bit like bamboo with its striped appearance. I don't know. Everybody hallucinates differently in anatomy and physiology when they're learning it. Let's identify these things. Here is a nucleus. Right. Here are my stripes again. So there are the striations. Notice I called this a cardiac myocyte. And then this thing in the middle that is separating one cardiac myocyte from the next is called an intercalated disc. Notice they're between all of these cells. So I've got several. An intercalated disc is like a wall. that joins two cells together, one on either side. But it's a special wall. So we're not we're going down here. It's a special wall because it has passageways in it. Well, that's pretty interesting. So there's little passageways in it called gap junctions. So an intercalated disc has gap, which means opening, junctions. And this is the way the heart cells talk to each other. So essentially through a gap junction, I could send calcium right over next to the next heart cell. 
next cardiac myocyte. And in that way, I, I move my signal along. So if the signal comes from uh, here and it moves through this gap junction, then it might move through this one to tell the sky to contract, and there might be a signal you know, coming in this direction. And it has to move through these little gap junctions. And this is how the heart coordinates contraction. If I move calcium through all of the little holes in the intercalated discs in succession, and I do it very quickly, I can tell everybody in all of the sarcomeres that I need to contract at the same time or at least have the uh, upstairs of the heart, the atria, contract before the downstairs, the ventricles. But in any event, I want the entire upstairs of the heart to contract, and then I want the entire downstairs of the heart to contract, as it were. That's just a fun way to put it. So just think of intercalated discs as having little passageways through them to push the message, and the message is calcium. That's why calcium is so important when it comes to muscle contraction, particularly to heart contraction. Later you'll learn how calcium is used in the sarcomere and how, it, uh, how it's used and bound by the little proteins that I was telling you in there that force the Z bands closer together. Okay, so that's good enough for cardiac muscle. Our third muscle tissue type is smooth muscle. Smooth muscle. And it kind of is like it sounds. It's pretty smooth. It does not have any striations. Let's write the first characteristic though with the other ones. It, this is involuntary, just like cardiac muscle. You wouldn't want to have to keep up with this uh, where it is in your vessels, in your organs. You don't want that job. So the body takes care of that for you. It's involuntary. It's around your organs, like your stomach, your intestines and blood vessels, it's in lots of places, but these are just generalizations. Okay. There are no striations, no striations. So that means it's not made like cardiac or skeletal in that it's not formed into sarcomeres. Now it still has an arrangement, but it's really forms in sheets. And I liken it to, hmm, if you've ever played around with one of those glob feeling, um, you know, toys in the, in the toy aisle, it's like a little ball and you squeeze it and then it tries to slip out through your fingers. Um, smooth muscle is like that. If we think about it looking like a series. I think it looks like a school of fish, really. Of course, I haven't seen a lot of schools of fish in my life, but this would be my closest approximation to it. Now, if I put a bunch of these together and then I add some nuclei, it does look kind of like some kind of animal like that, that travels in a school or a plant, however you want to think about it, some leaves all together like that. But it forms in these sheets and it has a mesh network around it. It's kind of like a mesh bag that you would put around soccer balls for practice, you know, a way to carry them. Anyway, it's got kind of this net around it. So you'll see they, they look like they're contained in a net, and when they shorten, they try to pop through their net, right? So this is not a great picture, but you can see the length changed here considerably. And then they start to sort of bulge through the net, which is what I was talking about. Sometimes you see toys that have nets around them, and if you squeeze them, it's a little rubber ball or whatever it is. When you squeeze it, it tries to squeeze through your individual's fingers like that. So the length 
has changed. Going from this length to this length, and I've got these bulges sticking out here, trying to pop through the net. So smooth muscle is like this. I, again, I liken it to a school of fish. appearance uh, in sheets. Now what they mean by sheets is that, say you've got a stomach here, really rudimentary stomach there, and around the stomach are three different sheets of muscle. So one sheet might run in this direction and another sheet run in this direction and then yet another sheet running in a third direction and so those are the orientations of the fibers they're all running in different directions so when all of the orientations um, contract, uh, it squeezes whatever the organ is. And so that would squeeze the stomach. And in that way you could squeeze and churn the stomach. So these are sheets of muscle uh, running in opposite directions. You'll see it as concentric and horizontal and all these things. So let's just think about smooth muscle as uh, having this long, muscle cell. This would be a smooth muscle cell. And if I put several of them together, I start to get that, what I was calling that school of fish appearance. All right, so it's just a long, thin cell. It does not have sarcomeres, so it doesn't shorten from Z-band to Z-band. It does shorten because it's got this reticular mesh around it and it tries to pop through the mesh whenever it shortens.